Okay, welcome to section 4.5, graphing our rational function. The goal here is to be able to graph your function without using the calculator. So there are eight steps, and we're going to go ahead and get those all written down. So we need to fa factor as much as possible to begin with. Factor as possible. And I'm going to go ahead and just write them all down, so pause the video to copy down these notes. Okay, so I'm just going to talk you through them. We're going to factor the numerator and denominator as much as we can. We're going to reduce. So if you have a fat, same factor in the numerator and denominator, you want to go ahead and cancel them, but note the location of the holes. We want to find x and y intercepts. And again, find y, x intercepts by setting the equation equal to zero. Find y intercepts by setting x equal to zero. We need to find our vertical asymptotes. We need to find if we have horizontal or an oblique asymptote. Remember, you can't have both, only one. We will create a sign chart. We will analyze the behavior near the asymptotes, and then we will graph it. These first five steps you can do in any order. You just have to have them all done before you can do step six. Okay, so let's take a look at example one and see what to do. Step one, we want to factor. The numerator cannot be factored, but the denominator factors into x plus 2, x minus 2. Okay, step 1, or step 2 now, reduce. There's nothing to reduce right here, so I'm going to go ahead and move to step 3, find my x-intercepts. And to find the x-intercepts, we set y equal to 0 and solve for x. So 0 equals x plus 1 over, or I'm sorry, x minus 1, Let's be careful there. x minus 1. And it's over x squared minus 4. Okay. If I want to solve for x's, I need to get x's out of the denominator. And I do that by multiplying both sides by the denominator. On the right side, the x squared minus 4's will cancel with each other. On the left side, 0 times x squared is 0. 0 times negative 4 is 0. So really, I'm left with my numerator equal to 0. So you can skip this step and just set the numerator equal to 0 to find your x-intercepts on a rational function. And here, when I add 1, I get x equals 1. So the x-intercept is at 1, 0. We now need to find our y-intercepts. y-intercepts are found by setting x equal to 0 and solving. So I've got y equals, and again, I'm simply going to put zeros in wherever there is an x. So 0 minus 1 over 0 squared minus 4. So numerator is negative 1. 0 squared is 0 minus 4 is a negative 4. And negative divided by a negative is actually a positive. So my y-intercept is at the x value of 0. y is 1 fourth. Okay. Moving on to vertical asymptotes. So this was step four. Our vertical asymptotes are found from the denominator, setting each factor equal to zero and solving for x. So x plus two equals zero, x minus two equals zero. So this one's going to give me x equals two. Sorry, x equals negative two. This one, when I add two, I get x equals positive two. So my vertical asymptotes are at x equals negative 2, x equals positive 2. Now for horizontal asymptotes versus oblique asymptotes, remember the way we discover this is we have to compare the degree of the numerator with the degree of the denominator. So my numerator the degree is 1, the denominator the degree is 2. So it's larger degree on the bottom. That tells me I've got a horizontal asymptote, and it's located at y equals 0. So now we've got x-intercept, y-intercept, vertical asymptotes, and our horizontal asymptote. We are ready to do step 6, which is creating a sign chart. For my sign chart, okay, so for our sign chart, the things that we need to put on this number line we need to put our x-intercept, so I'm just going to call that location 1. I also need to put both my vertical asymptotes. 
So I've got a vertical asymptote at negative 2 and positive 2. We don't put on our y-intercepts, and we don't put the horizontal asymptote. So it's only the vertical asymptotes and x-intercepts go on here. And now what we have to do is pick some number in this interval, so from negative 2 to negative infinity, and plug it into our function. So some x value smaller than negative 2. I will plug it into my function r of x, and I just want to see what value I get. Is it positive or negative? I'm not even concerned with the number, just the sign of it. I then will pick a number between negative 2 and 1, plug it into my function r of x, and see if the answer is positive or negative. Doing the same for each one of these. So on this first one, let's plug in, this is function r, I keep wanting to write f, let's plug in a negative 3, and again, all I'm doing is putting, wherever there's an x, I'm putting the negative 3. So negative 3 minus 1 divided by negative 3, and that's squared. So make sure you put parentheses around that if you put it in the calculator, minus 4. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. Negative 3 squared is 9. Minus 4 is 5. So the answer is negative 4 fifths. All I care about is the sign. That's a negative. So what I'm going to do is simply write a negative above this interval. I then I'm going to do the same thing here, plugging in some value between negative 2 and 1. Now I've already plugged in 0. That's how I got the y-intercept. So let's pick a different number. So negative 1. Plug that in. And when you plug in negative 1, your answer here is positive 2 thirds. So we get a positive sign. And again, plug these in yourself to make sure you understand. Oops, I don't want a line right there. Between 1 and 2, I now need to plug in some value. I'm going to plug in 1.5. It's right in the middle. When I plug in 1.5, I end up with 0.5 over, let's see, what was that? 3.5 multiplied by negative 0.5. Okay, so I have a positive in the numerator. Positive times a negative is a negative. And a positive divided by a negative is negative. So that gets a negative sign. And finally, after the x value of 2, I need to plug in something. So let's pick how about positive 3 here. If you plug positive 3 into the function, you will end up with positive 2 over 5, which is positive. So I've got a negative sign for all x's smaller than negative 2. I have positive for x's between negative, one, negative 2 and positive 1. I have a negative value for y's between 1 and 2. And for all x's that are greater than 2, my y values are positive. So how do we use that? Well, what we're going to do is come over to our graph. And notice that I've marked these off in increments of 4. Just the graph was too tiny to try and use with the, that size box. So this is 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2. First thing I'm going to do is draw in my vertical asymptotes. And I've got one at negative 2. And we always draw asymptotes with a dashed line. And I've also got one at positive 2. Now, of course, you can use a ruler if you want to exact. I'm going to label x equals negative 2. That's a vertical asymptote. x equals 2 is a vertical asymptote. And we had a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So again, dashed lines here. And we had an x-intercept at 1, 0. So I'm going to just draw a sort of big circle so I know I'm supposed to touch the x-axis there. And I'm, I may touch, I may cross, I don't know yet. And finally, we had a y-intercept of 0, 1 fourth. So let's go ahead, put that guy on our graph. Make that a bit bigger so you know it's not just a mark. Okay, how do we graph? So we've got to think about what it means to be a horizontal asymptote. It simply means that you're going to stay close to this asymptote as you get close to positive infinity and negative infinity. And let's go to the next video to finish this off.